Welcome back. New 3D Primer. Hopefully this one will be pretty quick. Um, the point of these is not to model a whole thing and get you to follow along or anything like that. It's to teach you the very basics so that you can take that information and go forth and do what you want with it. So, this time we're going to learn to sub-D model in Maya. So what sub-D mean? Subdivision. And it's as simple as that. All you're doing is subdividing your model so that when you smooth it it turns in to a smooth cool looking thing so we're gonna jump into that real quick it's actually pretty simple and I hope it's not too crazy so the way I do it there's a bunch of ways that you can do anything you can do it 3D Studio Max you can do it in ZBrush there's different ways to do it in Maya I'm gonna show you the way that I do it um, it's kind of the more traditional way to do it where what you're doing is inserting an edge loop to make an edge stay uh, stay creased. So what I mean by that, I'm going to go ahead and do a, uh, a smooth preview by pressing the number 3 button. I do that and it's still the same poly count, it's just a preview of what it would look like if it was smoothed. So there is a mesh smooth option, like you can actually run a, uh, let's see, where is it, smash, and see, this is how often I use it, because I do it a different way. So you can go to mesh, you go to smooth, and you could set uh, variables for how you want to smooth. The problem with doing it this way for me is that it can be somewhat unpredictable, and uh, you you may not get the results that you see. I like doing a, a different method that I'll show you because I actually get what I see. So when you subdivide, if you're just doing a cube, you're actually going to get this smooth sphere. Because what it's doing is just taking an approximation of everything. It's almost like it's melting it down into its its most simple form. So I get this sphere when I take a cube and I and I smooth it down. So I go to my modify, don't worry, we'll go over this part. If I convert it, you can see my wireframe turns into this sphere and it's got a lot more polys. So why would you even want to do this? Well, when you do subdivision work, it's normally for uh, hard surface things like if you're making a generator or a gun or something like that. You want to make edges stiff to get nice smooth uh, edges instead of these these hard ones right here like you get traditionally on a I guess a low poly model and you actually let me insert another edge loop to just kind of oops 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 while I fat finger my keyboard insert edge loop I'm gonna add one here add one here and add one back here kinda show you what I'm talking about if I smooth this you can see I have still this hard creased edge right here but it's been smoothed out so when I bake this down to a low poly model, I'm going to get this nice smooth transition as opposed to the hard edge that you would get by not doing this. So you can imagine the more complex things you make, uh, the more swoopy cool things you add, the more intense the model is going to get, but then you bake that to a low poly model. This is all about high poly to low poly, just like if you're in ZBrush or any other method like that. So what I'm going to do is cut this down and actually step through it now instead of just throwing it everywhere and hope you guys understand what's going on. So real quick I'm going to go over the other way you could do it. There's a new crease tool that's in uh, that's in Maya. I don't necessarily use it because it doesn't quite yield the same results but I'll show you real quick. You could select an edge, hold your middle mouse and scroll up and that's going to change the crease strength of an edge. So if I now select it, you can see this one corner is thicker. And if I press 3 to do my smooth preview, that edge isn't doing anything for me because it's all by itself. So if I do the same thing, select this, scroll it up, there you go. Now you can see this edge, if I do this one, and I select this edge, this is because it's a preview, it's going to morph while I do it. I'm going to go back into my cube mode. So I select it, hold my mouse, go down, it's 3. Now I've made all the top edges creased to their maximum amount, which is going to make this bullet kind of shape. So I'm going to do the exact same thing in my method, the kind of normal, traditional method, and show you why I use the method that I do. Because I'm going to get a similar result. I'm just going to insert an edge loop at the top instead of selecting those edges and using the mouse wheel. 
to my preview. You can see I get the same sort of thing, but my edge is still hard here, and my edge is nice and soft here. And again, this translates when I convert it. So I'll show you the next part of what I do. And I'll step through this stuff again, don't worry. So now that I've cut my edge and I have this shape that I want, and I've pressed 3 to preview it. You press 1 to go back, by the way. 1, 2, 3, 4. They all cycle through different viewing methods. So 3 for my preview. And I go to Modify, Convert. And then, where is it? Uh, smooth Mesh Preview to Polygons. So Modify, Convert, Smooth Mesh Preview to Polygons. And that converts it into what I've seen. And then I can take that, export it, and bake it as a high poly model. So pretty straightforward, right? Let's step through this real quick. So if I want to do, let's break this down, make a ring here. I want to do some kind of machine wheel. Well, obviously, this is real low poly. This is going to be gross. There's no reason to, to bake this down and get information, right? And I'll show you why sub D is important then. So I want to make a, a machine part, but I don't want to spend all the polys. I want to make a low poly model and then I want to bake that down. I want to make a high poly model, I want to bake that down to a low poly model. So if I smooth this right now, I'm going to get a ring. It's not really what I want. Let me get rid of the grid. So I'll go back, press 1. I'm going to start inserting edge loops. What I'm doing is I'm telling my model, basically, by inserting these loops, I want to hold on to these edges. I want to keep them sharp. And the further away I go, the less sharp it's going to be. So the closer I am to the edge, now if I preview it, you see I've got a harder edge on the bottom here that's still nice and smooth. If I get rid of the ring that I just made, and then I insert a loop up higher, and maybe this one out as well, now I have this ring that is still tighter than the soft, smooth, donut-y thing it was before, but it's not as sharp as the edge here. So that's something that's important to remember. The further away your rings are from the edge that you want to hold, the smoother it's going to be, that transition. So I'm going to go ahead and insert an edge loop, insert another edge loop, and the more information you're giving your model, the tighter this edge is going to hold. So that's important for machine parts, or if you're making like the sight on a gun, or rail system for it, or something like that. You're going to want to do this sort of thing. So there we go. Now I have this low poly looking thing with the edges, but if I do my preview by pressing 3, I now have this nice smooth ring here. So if I bake this out, I'm going to get this nice transition and these sharp edges, and it's going to look a lot cleaner and a lot, uh, a lot better. So you get all that cool lighting information in your normal map. If I want to, let's say, I want to add some holes into it. I would spend more time if I'm doing it for real, but I'm just showing you. So uh, face extrude. Going to scale that in. I'll do it again. Press G. Move that down. And I'm actually going to only go down a little bit. Press G and extrude down again. I press G and extrude down again. And you can see by doing that, I've created these rings that will hold this shape. So if I preview right now, remember when we had the cube and we smoothed it out and became a sphere? The fewer sides you have, the smoother it's going to be, just like our edge without the lines to hold it. So you can predict that this is going to become a round-ish shape. Again, it's, it's a little off, so it's not, it's not a square, so it's not going to be perfectly round. But if I press 3 to preview, there's my round-ish shape. And you can see why I'd want to do this now. Because instead of modeling, obviously, if I tried to model this as a low poly object onto a model, I would get tons and tons of polys and it would become super inefficient right away. Whereas if I model this out, uh, modify, convert, smooth mesh preview to polygons, I get my high poly there. And now I can export this out and have my low poly, which would essentially just be this ring that I had made before. We'll go ahead and do that real quick. Because why not? So 
So my, mo my low poly mesh would essentially be something like this. And I would take this into X normal and bake this information onto that. So I would get a normal map that has this sort of lighting information and would look like this from this angle, but right here. So on a low poly mesh. So that's, the, that's really the basics of sub-D modeling. And you just continue normal modeling like you would. And uh, do mesh, these extrude. I'll do a couple here and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So obviously again without any lines to hold this, if I preview that, I've got this weird, uh, I don't know what that is, like a cue or something. But if I insert edge loops, hold that edge, I'm going to hold that edge, let's keep, uh, let's keep this guy and that guy probably get this tube looking thing going into my my donut thing now so there we go you can see we kept those edges uh, firm by giving them extra lines to hold on to give them extra loops to to keep that sharp just like with our uh, our ring here so I get now this kind of hard surface piece onto this gooey donut thing <laughs> but that's really all there is to it you're, you're taking whatever model it is that you're making, you're inserting edge loops to define where you want your sharp edges to be, and then you're smoothing it however it is you decide to smooth it. Like I said, I do the, uh, the number three preview, then convert it so I have a good idea of what I'm, what I'm making. I just get what I see. And that's really all there is to it. Simple, pretty straightforward. That's sub D modeling in Maya.